Well, I'm now absolutely delighted to be joined by the APA's President, Dr. Jeffrey Lieberman. Dr. Lieberman, first of all, welcome. Thank you very much, Steve. Pleasure to be here. And thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. I know you've got a busy conference ahead. Yes. Let's kick off. Let's look at the, your year as uh, APA President. Uh, what are some of the milestones? Well, you know, everybody, when they're elected, doesn't know what's going to happen on their watch. In my case, by either misfortune or good luck, it was a very busy time. Um, I think that it began with really uh, the DSM-5, which had been uh, in development for over six years, but it had a very tumultuous development process, uh, being battered in the media, a lot of controversy and criticism. But when all was sudden done, it was completed on time. It was launched successfully. Uh, it was very well received by clinicians who use it. And in terms of the overall response of the critics in the media, there was a deafening silence. Uh, and I think that the APA uh, did a great job of trying to really persevere, stay focused, and not be uh, diverted or distracted by all of the sturm and drang that was going on around it. So that was a major accomplishment right off the bat. Then uh, we also were faced with another task, uh, which was uh, our former medical director and CEO, Jay Scully, was approaching the end of his um, decade-long tenure. And uh, we had to initiate a search for his successor. Uh, we carried that out. We identified uh, Dr. Saul Levin, who arrived in October of 2013 um, and uh, has done a great job of getting uh, settled in and uh, taking the reins of uh, uh, responsibility for the central office of the APA. So I think that um, smooth transition was another uh, real accomplishment. And then probably the biggest and most consequential thing is the uh, role that the APA has had in the healthcare reform process. Right. So healthcare reform is a, a major uh, policy and legislative initiative in the United States that's being carried out in a way which is not carefully orchestrated and uh, well thought out. It's being improvised politically, legislatively. And uh, the APA has realized that in order to ensure that this is done in a way that serves the needs of people with mental illness and supports what mental health care and psychiatric medicine needs to provide, that it needs to be involved. So the APA's um, Division of Advocacy, its government relations, its health policy staff have been very actively involved with the uh, members of Congress, with the administration, um, with uh, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services to um, provide input and help to support and advise on this legislation. And it's come out, uh, for the most part, quite well in that um, the final rule of the Parity, Parity Act was enacted with our input in November. The Affordable Care Act is now being implemented. And we're currently engaged uh, in uh, helping Congressman Tim Murphy of um, presenting and moving through the congressional process a, uh, um, a healthy uh, a fa an act in terms of uh, trying to support families in crisis, which largely came about as a result of the unfortunate series of violent crimes uh, incidents w w involving people with mental illness. It was important that the APA did get so heavily involved in the Affordable Care Act, wasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Because there's a real head of steam now, and, and the act is, as you say, becoming Im implemented. And if you'd have just stood on the sidelines, you wouldn't have achieved all the things that you have. Well, exactly. As uh, I think it was <clears throat> the French Prime Minister Clemenceau that said, you know, war is too important to be left to the generals. You know, medicine is too important. Healthcare is too important to be left to the politicians. Um, and so doctors aren't the best at sort of uh, getting out of their right. comfort zone and into the political arena. Um, but that's why you have professional organizations so that they can represent your interests. And fortunately, the APA is stepping up to the plate. Another part of the uh, APA's year is obviously this uh, fantastic annual uh, conference. What are some of the things that you're most looking forward to this year? Well, the APA conference is really um, just an uh, embarrassment of riches in terms of intellectual uh, resources and uh, forms of stimulation. Um, the difficult part is really choosing what to go to, but uh, we have um, an array of Nell Bell laureates and world-class scientists presenting. Uh, Eric Kandel, uh, Nobel Prize winning psychiatrist, the first in history. 
Um, we have uh, um, Dr. Gary Gottlieb, who is the CEO of the Partners Health System, uh, which oversees MGH and Brigham and Women's and McLean Hospital. We have Dr. Huda Zogby, who is the uh, pediatric neurologist who discovered the gene for Rett syndrome and a number of neurodevelopmental disorders. Um, but we also have individuals who are contributing to cultural and social awareness about mental disabilities, such as Andrew Solomon, whose book Far From the Tree was a, a huge success and recently published an article in The New Yorker about Adam Lanza uh, interviewing his father. Um, and then we also have very much of a political presence. Um, Vice President Joe Biden will be delivering the uh, convocation lecture. And uh, um, former Congressman Patrick Kennedy right. will be playing a prominent part in the program, uh, receiving an award and also introducing uh, Vice President Biden. And uh, Congressman Kennedy has been very much al aligned with the APA in trying to influence the uh, legislative process to make sure that it does the right thing. Lots to look forward to. Absolutely. It'll well, be a great meeting. Well, Dr. Liebman, thank you ever so much indeed for joining us, and, and uh, we look forward to uh, catching up with you again later in the week. Thank you. Anytime.